have you, Sopnil, and we are here at a SAP Tech Ed Conference, and we have with us Frank today from SAP. Uh, Frank, can you uh, tell us uh, a bit about yourself? What do you do at SAP? Yeah, I'm, uh, my role is uh, I'm Executive Vice President for Big Data Development, which is mainly developing the product called Data Hub, but also the, the whole enchilada of EIM products, uh, which we offer in SAP. Can you explain what exactly is Data Hub? Yeah, um, we solve a problem from the customer, which is the following, you know, SAP is very well known for handling transactional data, um, which is a kind of very well-defined, clear data, like orders, like financial data, and so on. Now we are seeing that companies that more and more data are created outside of this structured world, which are stored in different storage layers and different devices and different organizations. But as we see that the data becomes more and more an asset in a company, we want to use this asset also for the business processes. And especially customers say, you know, we want to use our asset and the value of the data, which is everywhere in our company. And what Data Hub does is organizing the data, um, the, the data management from the, the data is created to the end where we feed then data into kind of processes. And that means, you know, uh, we are able to access data where they are stored. We are able then to feed data into processing of the data, which is machine learning, data cleansing, data quality and so on. And then really feed it into business processes because at the end you want to do something with the data, you know, creating a um, creating an order, creating a marketing campaign, uh, these, these kind of things. So the end-to-end -end life cycle of data in a company. That's what Data Hub is doing. And what kind of data are we talking about? Because this morning uh, the keynote was there where you take a picture of a car, tweet it, and you know a lot of you know, back-end data. Or if you look at IoT devices, they collect a lot of data. So what kind of data are we talking about here? It's any kind of data. Kind of data. It's any kind of data and you can define the processing either by predefined operators which we deliver like you know we have a lot of operators for image processing and video processing but it's very very easy to use any kind of software stack which you want to use from open source from from everywhere um, that you that you can embed that for that we are extremely open and, and you can use any kind of data how easily can people plug in to this data so that they can harness it Yes, and a very good, a very good point. You know what we are doing with our data pipeline, how the data process is um, is called, is the following. And we are saying, okay, we have multiple operators, and one operator is, for example, reading data from uh, from Amazon. Let's say S3, then an operator which is cleansing data. Next operator is machine learning, and so on. So we build that system in a way that every operator is logically a container, um, and in the container you are kind of self-contained and you're, you're, you're running that container as, um, in the software stack as you want. So different operators are connected via pub-sub mechanism, so we decouple the operators by a messaging uh, system. We're using uh, their nuts. The point is now, during deployment of such a pipeline, we generate the containers, the Docker containers, and uh, uh, run them the, the complete pi pipeline after generating the, the containers. Now what you put into, the, into a container is up to the customer. So you can define on an operator and saying, you know, I want to use Python 2.7, I want to use the following uh, libraries, and then I write my own Python code. And during deployment of the pipeline, now we grab all the data, put them in a container, and then we run your code of the, of the customer with any kind of library and system you're having. And we are making sure with the container that nothing bad is happening, you know, that you cannot destroy the system. And that's what we call the openness. Do everything you want, we shield it with a container, and then we run it together. And the programming model is very simple. An operator is reading from standard in and writing to standard out and we take care that this is feeded into a messaging system. From either resilience point of view, at the same time, compliance point of view, how does data help, help customer? Now, first of all, I think that the most important problem when you speak uh, uh, mainly now of, of compliance, you know, if you don't know in your company which kind of data you own, then you cannot be compliant. Exactly. You know? And then that's a big issue, because um, from a central point of view, when I speak with, uh, with our customers, uh, and I ask them, do you know which kind of data you have in your different organization on your different uh, levels and layers? Then every customer says, to be honest, no, we don't know. And that's the biggest problem is visibility into the data. And if you have visibility, then you can um, define your processes on top of the data. So first of all, um, Data Hub provides the visibility because you can connect the different systems 
and then you in the first shot know which kind of data you have and then we can define data processes on top which goes across the different let's say data silos or data storage layers and then you can uh, um, you can operate on that so very important is that the, the visibility into the data now the second uh, part of the question was you know how do you enable them to stay compliant you know or to be able to to either replicate data or move out of region yeah, is we it have aut automated or not everything is automated. Um, we have a lot of operators which allow you to do certain, oper uh, certain uh, functionalities. So, for example, we can uh, read the data, we have uh, data quality operators, we have data cleansing operators, these kind of things mm -hmm. are out of the box. So you can just then plug them together and, and model them. Um, for the rest of the stuff which is not yet there, you can program it by your own. Um, and, 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 and do that. So what we are providing is mechanism to develop that with our own operators in between and then monitor that and, uh, and, go and, and govern the, the complete processes and do um, lifecycle management of the stuff. So with that, we enable all these kind of processes. Uh, you mentioned one of the challenge customers face uh, is that they don't even know what data they're collecting. Second is that we are living in a data-driven world. Uh, we are generating so much data absolutely. from the cars and for everything. So what is the unique challenge that you see in the market with the amount of data that is coming in? Uh, first of all, handling this amount, uh, storing that, and then um, the, um, then figuring out the value of the data, um, and, 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 and and try to co collect the data, and then bringing that to an abstraction layer where it's, uh, where it's consumable. But very important is to implement the same lifecycle management, governance, and all the stuff of these data processes, which we know from uh, from the transactional world. And why is that? If you really want to do decisions out of your non-transactional data. Let's say you have an IoT um, um, scenario and a lot of sensors which tell you that maybe you have to change a very, very expensive component of a, of a, of a machine. And let's assume out of the sensor values, now you do that as a manager, you decide, now I exchange it. And then, let's say one year later, an auditor comes in your company and says, you know, why did you do that investment? And then it's extremely hard if you are, uh, let's assume the sensors were even cameras, um, that you reproduce the result from one year ago. There is no mechanism there. So at the end today, deciders cannot make really business relevant decisions out of the non-transactional data because you don't have the compliance and all the processes in place. So you have a lot of data. You can do a little bit fancy, nice machine learning and can watch the data, but you cannot really make the decisions because you don't have the processes. And as long as these processes are not in place, then your data don't help you and are not, not the assets uh, which you want to do and then you cannot derive decisions. And that's uh, for me a very critical thing in the business world. Right, also uh, with the evolution of IoT and so many sensors around it, you don't even know which data will have value tomorrow. Uh, absolutely, therefore customers are really going to store, you know, customers have recognized that data is the asset. And looking at the, at the evaluation of a company like Facebook and others, you know, why are they valued so high? Or even when, when Microsoft bought LinkedIn, uh, why did they pay so much? It's not about the software stack, it's about data. Mm -hmm. uh, and absolutely, so companies are now understanding that the data is the value. So what every company normally does is really storing the data. They don't throw data away, so it's growing and growing and growing. For that, um, data is there. And uh, now also the tools of handling the data will grow as we go. And there you have a lifecycle management. You know, machine learning processes and, and, and algorithms are improving. So we need this lifecycle management of, of the tooling and of the software stack to understand what kind of result did we do when and what is the quality of that. So if we improve the, the, the machine learning algorithms then also the quality of the results are there. So we have to handle this end-to-end -end process in order to understand at which point in time we had which results in what quality. And how are you leveraging machine learning to, to data itself has no value if you cannot actually extract uh, value from it? Yeah, so the, the idea is that um, we as Data Hub, we don't do machine learning by ourselves, we just enable machine learning. So you can use any kind of Python stack, you can call any kind of ser services, but very important is that we are feeding the data into, into machine learning training algorithms or consumption, and then taking the result and feeding them into, into, into some uh, processes uh, uh, where we need it. And we're enabling that by um, having all the components available so that, um, that, you know, that the data scientist is not 
doing most of his work on data preparation and then grabbing data that he really can concentrate on writing his machine learning algorithms and understanding the data and, and, and bringing really sense into the data. I think that's currently the critical issue because when you look at a company um, which has a, um, a team, let's say, of data scientists and what they need first is always the data. What do they do today? They have to call the IT and saying, you know, can you make me a, share, a snapshot of the, some data? Mm. And then they copy the data somewhere and then they're doing some processes. But you don't have a life cycle of that. You don't have a feed of the data and so on, because that's, there's no process available. And that's, I think, the critical thing of machine learning. Uh, I mean, if, if you look at the whole DevOps movement, it broke the silos. But, you know, if you look at that data, you know, it still is kind of... It's a big issue. Right. The siloing of the data is a big issue. And, you know, it also comes from the fact that, you know, you have diff in a big company, you have different organizations which own their, uh, which own their data. And, of course, uh, that's, a, uh, that's a kind of an identity. The data is also identity of the, of the guys. And why should they give the data to everywhere right. besides privacy issues? Um, also, having their breaking up the silos and having a certain level of data available to the whole company and to the others is a big is a big thing. And what we mentioned in the beginning, a lot of guys in the company don't know that there are data available. How, how should they? Uh, and um, and the siloing is also coming from not knowing right. of the data. Right. Uh, so I think we touch upon some broad topic. Do you think, oh, we, I mean, of course, we can sit for hours and yes. talk about data. But do you think anything, oh, this is what's critical, I wanted to talk about that. Yes, um, it is mainly about semantics of the data, mm -hmm. you know. Um, these physical things, physical movement and physical processing of the data, there we are quite good, you know. And um, um, of course, everything can be improved. But when you look at a business user, what he wants to do, he, the business user doesn't want to deal with files on a file system. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the CSV files from IoT data. He wants to deal with semantic things. Uh, for example, I had a customer, um, and that's quite challenging, who said, you know, what I would like to do, I would have to, I would like to have a semantic category privacy data, which are fields from a database, which are files, which are videos, which are documents, and so on. And then I want to do a pipeline, which says, I want to grab my privacy data, I want to um, uh, anonymous, uh, anonymize them, and then store it, uh, store it somewhere else. Therefore, we have to go from a physical layer of data to a semantic level of data, and then process the data on a semantic level and not on a physical level. And there are a lot of technical challenges come into game. How do you compile from a semantic pipeline into a physical pipeline and so on. But I think when I look at the future where this thing is going to, it is especially going into semantic uh, semantic pipeline. So, so we talked about a lot about data. Let's not talk about data. Let's talk about you for a while. Yeah. Uh, so, so when you're not doing all this data building in the big giant data, what do you do in your free time? Yeah, first of all, I'm a soccer fan. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching soccer today. My favorite club, Hoffenheim, played against uh, Manchester City. But like they lost to, uh, to the one. Then I have family, three kids. Yeah, that's a big hobby. And I'm doing. I love running. So doing running uh, every day, yeah, these kind of things. So, so when you do, are you wearing special kind of shoes which collects a lot of data? <laughs> yes, yes, I, I have in my clock here, you know. Uh -huh. I have in my clock collecting all the kind of things and looking at what's happening and if I improve. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Yeah. No, but you are using a stop. Have you built your own, you know, special, you know, uh, sensors, you know, shoes? Uh, that, not <laughs> yet, but that's a really great idea. Maybe I should do that. Yes. Anyway, uh, Frank, thanks, uh, friends. Friends, yeah. Uh, thanks for talking to me today. Hopefully, we'll see you again at the next conference. Thank you. Would be great. Thanks a lot. Thank you.